do today is I want to do like a little debate assessment. You know, I want to see what you know. Like, you know, just see, you know, see what you know. I'm going to put a timer on the clock. It will be like a little quiz. And hold on. Actually, you know what? Can I share it? No, I don't want to share it. I need to send it. Right. So put your emails in the chat. Excuse me. Um, and then I'm, I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna put a timer on, and no one can cheat on each other. I have so one person will have a different test exam. It'll be randomized. So don't be at. Don't be in the chat asking what's the answer to this. <laughs> Plus, it's on a limited time frame anyway. So put your um, um emails in the chat. I'm gonna send you this um this like pop quiz or assessment, whatever you want to call it. All right. Thank you, Ella. Thank you, Sam. Okay, send. Blue form in this email. Hold on. Is you want mine too? Yeah, if you want to just, yeah, if you want to, I was going to share it with you so you can just see it. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, you have my email anyway, right? Yeah, 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 I have it. I want it. Oh my God. Oh, I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> Um, who did I send that to? The first one is Sam. Let me know if you got it, Sam. Okay, I got it. You got it? Good, good, good. So, um, hold on. Don't start a chat. Okay, so everyone pull it up, just pull it up. <laughs> Let me know when you have it so I can pull up the timer. Just give me a thumbs up in the chat once you have um, got it pulled up. So me, you got it pulled up. Um, Sam, you got it pulled up. What about you, Ella? You got it? Okay, everybody got it pulled up. And then Amy, I'm, so before I um, send it to Amy, I just want to start the timer really quickly. You have, there's about um, 15 questions. I'm going to give you about mm, 18 minutes to answer. I think that's more than enough. And you, you can start on this little assessment now. Um, I don't think it'll let me fill it out. It won't? No, I don't think so. Hold on, did I do something wrong? Hold on, let's see. I can start, right? So would it allow you to add the um, answers in? Does it allow you to make the choice, Ella? Yeah. It does? Or when I put in my email, it did. Um, let's yes, see. Sam, did you put in your email? No, it won't let me <laughs> touch the email. Hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, there we go. It worked. OK, 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 yeah. All right, all right. So um, everybody, it's, you can start. You have about. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you about an extra 30 30 more seconds, but yeah, you can start now. And then Amy, let me I want to show it to you too. So let me just share it. Let me do this. Why well, can Bob just send it to you the same way? It doesn't matter. Amy is gonna remember you. Amsler, 
What is the what is your um hold on let me see can you put it in the chat for me real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um by the way, Susanna just asked me for the link, so she should be hopping in here in a second. Okay, okay. Thank you. I knew it started with the A. If for some reason it didn't auto put you, because usually, like I email you so much, it usually just pulls your email up, but for some reason it didn't do it this time. I know some of these things, some of these things you might, might be new to you. I might not be able to answer it, just answer it the best way you can. And we'll provide you the answers after the after you've submitted it. So make sure that you try to hit all fields and submit send so I can have your responses. <laughs> what do you think about my questions? You laughing at my questions, Amy? I was just laughing at the one that was like, list one good thing that happened this season. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give me one. <laughs> that was my way of sneaking in a survey. <laughs> Have about 14 minutes. Y'all probably don't even need as much time. It's not a lot of that many questions. Well, if you finish early, just like indicate in the chat or whatever that you're done. And then yeah. if everybody finishes, we can stop. But also don't feel like you need to rush. Right. Well, you you do have 13 more minutes. Oh, here is Susanna. Hey, Susanna, how are you? If you could quickly, we're doing an activity right now and I, I don't want you to be too far behind. Put your email in the chat. I'm gonna send you this assessment and you're just gonna quiz yourself on how much you know about debate. And then after that assessment, we're gonna go over answers so that you know that the, what the right answer is. And then me and um, Amy will, you know, have your answers. And so we'll continue to further make sure the things that you did miss, you don't miss them again. Wait, what do I put if I don't know something? Just put in a, if it's a, if it's a short term or a, a paragraph answer, just put, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just, you just, you just, I mean, you'll get a bad mark for that particular answer, but just keep going. There's, there's no grade for this. It's just so that we can help you know the answer later on. I know some of these answers you don't know. I'm just trying to figure out the ones you do know. Susanna, um, you have to enter your email so that because and, and it's a required field because I want to know what your responses are. So it bounces back those it bounces back those responses to me so that we can go over them during this period. So just put um put in your email. It'll uh, it'll give you the opportunity to put in your answers. Let me know when it works for you. Again, don't rush yourself too much, but it is a timed um assessment. So you have about 10 minutes left. I hope you guys aren't cheesing, cheating by using Google. <laughs> don't cheat. Please don't cheat. Be honest. You have to know this stuff by memory. 
It's okay if you don't. We obviously totally understand that you guys are pretty new to debate. So if you get don't know any of it at all, that is totally fine. That is what we need to know. And we're going to give you the answers in just a few moments. Um, I'm done. Oh, so am I. Good, good, good. I have confidence in you, Sam. We've been working hard. I have confidence in you. I know some of them answers you know. I know I tricked you up on some of them, but I'm hoping you get at least 75%. Where do we check the scores? They're going to come to me, and then um, I'll send it back to you via email. Oh, OK. Yeah, it's going to take all the responses. I'm done. I'm just doing that thing where it's like, select all the traffic lights and stuff. Mia and Su I mean, yes, Mia and Susanna, um, you all have about six minutes left. I think Mia said she was done, um, but Susanna, you know, obviously popped in late, so uh, or midway through, so probably still working on it. I'm done. That should be everybody. All right. So, oh, sorry. I was looking at people's responses. <laughs> I was trying to count who did what. Okay. Before I send over the responses and all that, let's just go through this together because this is a system. I'll give you responses. I don't know how to fully use the system yet. This is my first time using it. So um, I'll definitely get your responses back to you once I figure out how to set up. Because the, the system doesn't know what the answers are. So I have to put in what those right answers are and figure that out. But the first question is define the trade off just said. <clears throat> Who wants to start? Who has the answer? It should be Sam because I know I told him. Sam, oh, um, answer this. Define a trade off this head? Yep. Okay. I think um, that one's where you're. Um, oh my. So your disadvantage 
is that while you can um, fiat that uh, whatever it is that you want to happen in your plan is going to happen, there's going to be trade-offs that come with that based on that fiat, I think. What particular type of trade-off, though? Is it typically... Um, so typically, that would come in the form of um, political capital. So for example, if there's a plan um, heavily uh, favoring liberals or something like that, then this plan will be fiated to go through, but liberal political capital might be harmed in the process because they have so much litigation on their plate and this will only add to it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's getting there. That's, that's getting, getting there, there right. You're, you kind of missed it. Here's why. Um, so a trade-off <laughs> disset is typically the trade-off is with money. Um, now, trade-off diff set can also talk about political capital, but usually when the argument is talking about political capital, those are politics diff sets, not trade-off uh, diff sets. Yeah. All right. I, yeah, I was going to mention that, but I figured I'd just stick to <laughs> political capital. No, oh, well. Yeah. Did you want to say something else, um, Amy? Um, I mean, so just a, a, a trade-off diff set is usually... Um, it, it is politics. It's usually called a politics disad or um, an economy uh, like disad. And usually it'll be something, there will be something specific that they're going to list that you're trading off. And the, the danger of these is that, um, and the, the reason they're so effective is that a lot of teams will keep these hyper up to date with like whatever's happening in the news right now. So for a long time, the most hands down slam dunk, the most popular diss ad that everybody was running this year was a politics diss ad where the trade-off was the infrastructure bill. But then the infrastructure bill passed. And so now they had to do something different. So now at Berkeley, you're probably gonna see a politics diss ad and the trade-off is gonna be either build back better or it's gonna be midterms. Um, which is probably going to be the more popular one. So that's it's usually a, a hyper specific thing that you're trading off. Um, that the if we so for example they'll say like you know you're going to pass river rights. Let's say that's your case. You're going to pass river rights. That means that conservatives are going to be super mad. Fox News is going to go crazy. They're going to rile up their base. You're going to lose a bunch of Democratic seats, which means that the Republicans take over the government. That's the trade off. You lose the midterms. The Republicans are going to destroy democracy because blah, 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 whatever. Um, so that, that's a trade off this time. Yep. It's just right. that you, the, whatever you do saps and takes away from what resources could be used for something else. And that's that's what I was trying to say. I don't, yeah, but yes, yeah, so, no, no, you, you were talking, you, yeah, you were there, you were there. Yeah, um, for, just, for what it's just from my understanding, just how I like to categorize the arguments. Typically, we trade off this as from from my premises that it's money that's being traded off. So that sometimes arguments about military readiness could be a trade off this set, or saying that you know maybe you're spending this much money, or or you're using this, or you're using this this much political capital, and that's why we can't make this other plan happen basically and this other yeah. plan is important yeah yeah okay next question should you run a link turn and impact turn together i know amy has said it i know i have said it <laughs> <laughs> who has the answer besides sam <laughs> true or false should you run those two strategies together Amy, what you think? Uh, I know that, that is false. <laughs> yes, I'll that is false. Do that. Don't ever you do, do that. not do it together. And why, Amy? Why do you not do it together? If you link turn and impact turn, what you have just done is double turned yourself. So, for example, let's say, um, like, what your your disad is the economy disadvantage, right? So, let's say you link turn your economy disadvantage in novice. You say. Uh, so the link is that the plan destroys the economy and you're the affirmative. And you say, you know what? Actually, our plan is good for the economy. We actually help the economy. Link turn your stupid link. Then you say, okay, impact. Their impact is the economic collapse leads to world war. And you impact turn and you say, you know what? Actually, though, a war is good because war means that we you know, can, can get rid of these polluting superpowers that are destroying the climate. 
unchecked. That's the only way to stop them is through war. So actually war is good. What you've just done is you said, first off, we prevent the economic collapse, which means that we won't lead to war, but actually war is good. So you've now, you're now saying our plan prevents that war from happening and that war would have been a good thing. So now your plan does something bad and the negative says, thank you for this brand new disadvantage you've given me, which is, which you've conceded to, which is that your plan does a bad thing. And so judge, you shouldn't vote for them because clearly they do bad stuff. So that's why you don't do both because when you do both, you you like basically 180 the thing all the way back to being bad for you again. Yeah, it's like you're conceding yourself. Yeah. Um, that's the next answer. So this one is, we, we kind of answered this one earlier. Um, affirmative topic is limited to rights of nature affirmative produced by our lab or our league. True or false? Amy answered this earlier. Affirmative topic, well, Sam, you know this answer. Answer it. Um, the <laughs> I thought. I mean, it's it, you should know. It's false, isn't it? Yes, yes. Of course, you know this answer. It's false. <laughs> we talked about it's, this for three hours. Yeah. You should uh, know yeah, this I, is false. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's if, it was me, limited. Please, please don't limit. Yeah. Please don't let my little teacher heart die inside. No, no, don't <laughs> worry. It's false. false. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And oh, it's well. that's because if there was, um, we call it, I mean, if we didn't affirm the topic, <laughs> then there wouldn't be anything to be debating, I guess. Yes, there would be no ground for anyone. We need ground. Like, yeah. That's what, that's why the t topic people or the topic creators make it so that they try to make it so that you have both sides to debate. Right, yeah. and so that could just be arguing topicality nonstop. <laughs> right, right. Well, so, so, yeah. so remember what I think this question is saying. The, this year's topic is not rights of nature. Right. This year's topic is the United States federal government should substantially increase its protection of water resources in the United States. Rights yes. of nature falls under that umbrella, right. but there's a whole bunch of other things under this umbrella. We're yeah. just, we in the novice division are focusing on rights of nature because we're using it as a tool to like teach you the fundamentals of debate. But like at Berkeley in the open division, you are not restricted to that rights of nature topic. There are dozens of other pre-written cases and I'm sure hundreds of cases that you could come up with on your own uh, that would fall under the umbrella of this topic. So that's what that question is basically pointing yeah. out to you. Remember what the topic is. Yep, 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 yep. Speaking of topicality again, um, next question. Are counterplans non-topical? Sam, what's the answer? You should know it. Yes. Yes, counterplans are non-topical. Is if a counterplan was topical, then you'd just be saying, go ahead and vote for them because it's topical. <laughs> right. It's well, not saying go ahead and vote for them, but you're you're basically affirming the topic and you're negative. Yeah. You'd be saying, I mean, you'd be supporting them basically, though. Well, so, I mean, this question kind of confused me because I think that counterplans being non-topical is still sort of being debated whether, because couldn't like really? a, a plan inclusive counterplan technically be, topi be topical um, or, or like an advantage counterplan might be topical um, because it would fall under the umbrella of the topic, but it would still be mutually exclusive, technically. That's true. But, but I think that there's a lot of theory debate, like it's dangerous to present a counter plan that is topical because there's a lot of theory debate about how that's not fair to the affirmative because you're, you're stepping on their turf. Uh, that's true. Here's why, this is why Amy's here. I told you I'm not the theory debater. I told you this. I told you these things. Um, but no, no, she's right in that respect. Um, but here's what I'll say also too, in my, in, in my, from my understanding though, from what I understand, the part that you do pick out of though, most times makes you not topical. Most times. There's, because of, because for, and here's another thing too, on this conversation about topicality and how to affirm the topic, I have now in my year have seen 17 different types of topics, right? And so in those different 17 different types of topics, how theory and how debates are conducted can change. But um, so some of these things, again, debate has no rules. Most of these things are just norms, right? But um, we're just trying to teach you some of the fundamental theories behind these things and why you strategize the way you do. 
Right. But the answer was... Uh, I guess. In most cases, yes, you should be non-topical. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's much... If you're going to be doing a counter plan, it's much safer to be non-topical because this is the complicated thing with theory is that there are generally sort of accepted... Um, ways that people <laughs> uh, go about theory in the community. Like it's generally accepted, this might be a word that you don't know, that it's generally accepted that most judges accept conditionality for counter plans as sort of a baseline. So if you're arguing no unconditionality is best, you actually have sort of an uphill battle usually. And it's the same yeah. thing with counter plans being non-topical. It's generally accepted that they should. So if you run a counter plan that is technically topical, you are running a huge risk that you're going to get destroyed in a theory debate. Can you do it? Yes, but it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. That's... But yes, so the answer here is true. They should be, if you want to make your life easy, they should be non-topical. Yeah. Right. We're not there yet. So just know that it's not topical for right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're... We'll, things will get more nuanced and, and more nuanced. Uh, I don't want to make it too complicated. But yeah, it'll be more nuanced. The, sure. This is the problem yeah. with policy debate is that the answers are usually, well, most of the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And and it's going to end for the and for the following answers too. Not and, and, and it's not just going to be for this answer. It's going to be for some of the following answers within this assessment as well. Um, next one. Fairness in education is a voting issue for both topicality and framework. And this is for most of the time. <laughs> true or false? Uh, true. Right? Yes. Fairness in education is a voting issue for both um, topic and framework most of the time. Vote, fairness in education are not always uh, people's voters. Some people have different voters. You, again, we are the debaters. We choose what should be conducted and what are those paradigms and understanding ways of thinking. Um, depending on the strategy or the framework or the critique argument, a, a, a person might have their own voters that they created based on maybe the author that they're reading, based on the philosophy that is being projected. I don't know. People might have their own voters. voters. But most of the time, it's uh, fairness and education. And both um, fairness and education is uh, what people vote on for topicality and framework based on their violations. Yeah. Okay. You can run a counter plan without a dissent. Should um, you dissent? Should you run a counter plan without a dissent? Yeah, you can run a counter plan without a dissent. Ellie, Ella, you shook your head no. Yeah, you should probably have a net benefit, I would say. Yes, most of the, I agree with Ella on this one. Most of the time, you should have a net benefit. I don't know what, in my opinion, I don't know what counter plans exist without just, just having a counter plan. Even like, I think some of the weird types of dis ads I would run, I would have like some kind of counter plan. Oh, you mean the disadvantage of the counter plan itself? Yeah, like you should like, yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you meant, can you run a counter plan and then also a disadvantage to theirs? Oh, did I word that wrong? I feel, I mean, maybe I'm just crazy, but. <laughs> what, what? I, mean, I, I understood what you meant, but maybe it's more because, you know, if you're super experienced with debate, like you automatically understand what you're referencing. Um, but yeah, so, so, so for an example, though, of a counter plan that didn't have a net benefit, although I guess most of you guys weren't here last year. But last year's topic was police reform. And the case that um, Bottle was running was uh, abolish ICE, which is immigration and customs enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, the counter plan was reform ICE. So get rid of most of it, but keep a specific subdivision that focused on fighting sex trafficking. There was no net benefit to that counter plan because those two actions are mutually exclusive. You cannot abolish and also reform at the same time. Um, well, but that's, it's very, that's very characteristic of a good counter plan is that it's you can't exist in the same one though, right? Yeah, but it's hard. It is hard to find a situation in which those things are going to, going to be directly mutually exclusive. It's very rare that that happens. So it's much safer to have a net benefit because if you, the, the danger is that if you don't have the net benefit and they can prove that you're not mutually exclusive to their plan, they'll just permit and you just gave them another good thing to vote for the affirmative for. So yeah. even if it, even if you think it's mutually exclusive, it's 
a good idea to have some backups, some other reasons why it can't happen at the same time, exactly. which would be your disadvantage, which would be your net benefit. So in the open division, you have the state's counter plan, the disadvantage or the net benefit being federalism. Yep. I think anytime you have um, some type of counter plan, you should have multiple disadvantages just in case, you know, something doesn't work. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, most, again, like I said before, some of these things are going to be most of the time. There's moments where you like debate is not within a vacuum or like solid and concrete. Like the lines can change sometimes. Um, list three different types of perms. Um, uh, should I just list the perm type? Yeah, go ahead. List them. All right. Um, memorial or memorial yeah. severance. Yeah. Time. In. Yep. And there's a few more. Um, Amy, do you know yeah. any others besides those three? We said memorial. Would you say severance? Severance time frame. There's the one I, I didn't like it, but there's uh let me call it the one that just says both of ours suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um intrinsicness, I think it was. Was it intrinsicness? Yeah, intrinsicness. Yes, intrinsicness perm. And then there's also the most important one y'all forgot. Do both, just a regular oh. perm. Do both of yeah. them. Well, intrinsic perms don't say that both of your suck. Intrinsic perm <laughs> is when you're, so if like you have a plan and they have a counter plan, you can introduce a perm where you say do both and this third thing, and that will solve all of our problems. That's an intrinsic perm. You're adding something in um, oh, that will I, fix I, everything. It's adding something in? Yeah, yeah. So, yes. So it's not necessarily that like, just you're just not conceding like both of ours suck what do we do we're just stuck with the status quo that's not it <laughs> yeah is that i thought i mean that's what i have written down which i never understood why you'd ever want to make that argument well the, the danger of doing adding the third thing i mean there's again debate so there's always danger in doing some of this stuff the danger is you kind of are implying that neither of your actions are enough because you have to right. add this third thing and then the negative again it could come at you with some theory being like it's not fair that you can just arbitrarily just add random stuff in but order to you, solve because you could add anything then you could add right. infinite actions if you were to add that just in the regular plan like can you do that no it no. unless so once this is the this is the important thing about your plan text once you put your plan text out there in the 1AC, the only time you can sort of change your plan text is through a perm. Yeah, and but that's the I danger mean, of I, the negative getting that opportunity, or giving them that opportunity to perm. But if you wanted to uh, do intrinsicness, couldn't you just have like thought it through and put it before in the plan text itself? I mean, you would have to it depends on what that other thing is because it's like is yeah. that other thing is it is that other thing topical is that other thing yeah. exclusive like what is that other thing you know there's there's yeah. moments where that could be possible and, and, and it, it does the the does the resolution allow for that to happen you know what i mean yeah because, yeah, yeah you you run the risk of if you add that extra thing it to like, become non-topical but very i i don't i can't think of an instance where somebody run topicality on a perm so you can technically <laughs> be non-topical with you permit, but you can't have that in your original plan text. Right. Did, did I answer your question, um, Sam? Yeah, definitely. Okay. These are kind of like scenario conversations. I want you to understand how some of these scenarios work out, work out, work their work themselves out throughout debates. Here's another. The next one is a tricky one too. This one I definitely threw in as a wrench because yes. Performance debate. This is the type of debate oh. that some people said, I guess I did. A type of debate that abandons the concept of debate as a policy making and focus on the ability of to cause change in our society or the activity, which we call debate. Performance debate usually does not include plans and may include music videos and other forms of expression and speeches. This is so funny to me. True or false? <laughs> I'm gonna just answer this for both of you. It's true and false, right? And here's what I'll say about this. Um, as a person who did quote unquote performance debate or project debate, I really hate those words. And um, I was talking to someone who is actually, let's just talk serious for a second, who is from the projects. Um, and I didn't think about it because it's like, and how that 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 word could 
become racialized at moments because I'm, I'm not from the projects. I mean, I grew up in the, you know, the hood, but I wasn't from the projects, So I didn't know that where it's like, perform- well, I would, and also too, it's like, why is not there's the other flip side to this, which is also in here is policy debate, right? Let's just skip down to this part. It's policy debate, policy making debate, a false, a follow, a ph- excuse me, a philosophy that debate rounds should be evaluated from the perspective of pseudo legislators weighing advantages and disadvantages of conflicting two policies. Like, why can't I do this? And, like, like, like maybe as it relates to those legislators in my uniqueness claim, I played like the 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 little clip of Kanye West saying, um, "Legislators don't give a, a, fl- a flip about black people, right?" Like that could be my status quo, right? Like those two things can exist. Like policy making is performing, and performance debate is policy making. Like those two are not mutually exclusive. I don't know why, and I think, and especially, I've worked so hard as a debater, like within this community, to like like relinquish those like types of narratives about what I, I don't I just, I just don't understand why people are always used I, that, I, and, I, and the crazy thing is I got that definition from a debate handbook it's like people still use these types of languages within a debate performance debate you know because so we're all performing it. we're all talking about policies there's no plan though yes uh, so I did do debates where like I would like I had like one ACs that would include like um, advocacy statements, they wouldn't be not necessarily like plan text. So yeah, there's arguing so with just, something's it's not like, just performance debate. There's also it could just be because the, another thing it gets called is like critique affirmatives. Right. Um, which is what Nuriel and Vic ran at the last tournament. They actually had a critique affirmative where they did not have a plan text, they had an advocacy statement. So huh. uh, sorry, Sam, what were you gonna say? No, no, no. I just, I didn't know you could have no plan text. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yep. I, I I would run critique apps too that would include like different philosophers and stuff. But um, yeah, um, you know, I think you should, what what I'm trying to say with this with this particular question is you should just take the the, the arguments for its merits, and that's how you should treat every argument. It's just not b- based on its merits. You should you shouldn't go to a debate around thinking oh this person is running a quote unquote cap K because you think they're, they're that cap K debater. It's like, who knows what type of uh, different type of nuanced arguments they're making. You should just take, you know, take it for, um, for what it is. Right. All right. You can make new arguments in the rebuttals. Everybody should know this one. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, right, next one. You can be out the counter plan. You can what? Be out the counter plan. You can what? Be out the counter plan. Oh. Can't or can? Oh, well, it says cannot. Sorry. You cannot be able to oh. plan. Uh, false. Yes, you can. Right. You can. You can You can definitely fiat the counter plan. Yeah. For sure. If you can fiat the affirmative, why can't you count? Yeah, if you can fiat the plan, then there's no reason why you couldn't fiat the counter plan. Right. Exactly. Just want to mention really quick about the question before that, which was, um, uh, oh, new arguments and rebuttals. Uh-huh. Um, you cannot make entirely new arguments, but as the 1AR, for example, if the 2NC makes a new argument, you can respond to that. You just can't like introduce an entirely new disadvantage or an entirely new theory argument or like something brand new that's not responsive to something else. Like you just have to be responding to what your opponents have already said. Um, so just keep that in mind. Like, it's not like if they say something new in the 2NC, then the 1AR is like, oh, shucks, guess we lose. Like, you can <laughs> respond. You, it just can't be a brand new argument. And, and usually usually you do that with arguments you already have, and you're just building upon that. You, like, again, you would just be extending maybe your card and being like, we've, you know, we've kind of already addressed that through via our 1AC or our 2AC. And so here again, I'm just addressing it again. Or, and this is how our plan, you know, resolve the situation again. Oh yeah, one of me and Susanna's judges last tournament was um, saying how our rebuttals were kind of frowned upon because we read cards in one of our rebuttals, but we didn't think, we knew it wasn't against the rules, but we weren't sure if that was like okay or not to read cards. Was this the one I think? Yeah, it was the one where me and Susanna debated Sam and his partner Reed. Yeah, I believe that, yeah, yeah. I remember that. (laughs) I mean, so if I remember correctly, the cards that we put into your rebuttal were just like 
They were response cards. But they, they were responsive. Were and they were things like we solve and stuff like that. Yeah, you can read cards in the 1AR yeah. and in the 1NR. So yeah. Yeah. Most, of the time, most of the time, the 2NR and the 2AR is where people kind of lay off the cards. Mm-hmm. Yes. But you yeah. can absolutely read cards in the 1NR and in the 1AR. The, you know, sometimes judges are just maybe not as experienced or they got wrong information somewhere. Um, but that is, don't, don't listen 